Anonymous. We are 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 Expectos. 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 We are Anonymous. 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 We expect us. Expect us. Expect us. We are anonymous. Refuse to stay hand. Relay the rest with the sequel. Some are dying in the library. Playing chess with the reaper. Beneath us is a pile of dead professors and teachers. The only thing they told us was that they can never teach us. And they can never reach us. We too far gone. Long beyond the deepest regions. Intelligent creatures. Philosophers. The deepest thinkers. We are anonymous. We are legion. We are the peacekeepers. But still fight for freedom. We are the There would be no checkpoints. Without 9-11, we wouldn't be called terrorists. Why would these terrorism apparatuses be used against average citizens, Americans? Without 9-11, this would have never happened. They would have never gotten away with any of this, with any of these police state institutions, without 9-11, without supposedly going after Osama bin Laden, which is still free. This is what the mainstream media is ignoring. They're ignoring the facts. They're ignoring the sources. They're ignoring the people who lived through it. They're ignoring all the people who are questioning the official story with facts, with science, with first-hand personal accounts. And they will keep ignoring it because they won't let this truth come out. Because as soon as this truth comes out, everything they did to justify their actions as of 9-11 is going to be down the hall. Judge, how would you describe this man? I would describe this man as an American hero, as a person willing uh, to risk life, limb, and, and liberty in order to expose to the American people one of the most extraordinary violations of the American principles, value judgments, and the Constitution itself uh, in, all, in all of our history. A person so familiar with the intelligence community, as you heard from the excerpts that you uh, just played, he's aware of the personal danger to himself, he knows of the likelihood of prosecution, but he also understands that the government listening to half the country is not what was bargained for when statutes were enacted in, in the days and weeks after 9-11. Greetings citizens of the world, we are anonymous. For many years now, we have warned the citizens of the world about the threats that government pose to the freedoms of the internet. Over this period of time many people have woken up to the lies told by government officials and now understand the importance of keeping the internet open and free for all to use. The events that have transpired over the recent days have proven, indisputably, that the governments of the United States and the United Kingdom are trying with all effort possible to monitor the Internet. You might ask us, if not to fight terrorism, what are they looking for? The governments of the world are corrupted to the core, by greed and lust, intoxicated by power, they fear losing this power to the people. Let us look at this secret spy system prism, and its apparent effectiveness. It has failed to stop terrorism, but has succeeded in monitoring everyone in the world, even law-abiding citizens. It is true that there are evil people in this world who must be watched to ensure the safety of others, but it is simply immoral and unethical to blanket monitor everyone worldwide, assuming that everyone must be guilty of something. Edward Snowden is a true hero of the people worldwide for revealing this. In stepping forward to bring us the horrifying truth about the draconian state secretly operating, he has put his life on the line, he has given up his job with the government, he has lost his family and loved ones, he now risks extradition and life sentencing to prison, merely for telling us that each and every one of us is being watched, monitored, documented, recorded and categorized. The fact that companies like Microsoft, Facebook, and Google are involved, means that a significant amount of the Internet, as we know it is under inspection. The right to privacy has been violated. 
people are in greater danger from this surveillance system than they are from terrorism because the terrorists have not been stopped. What we are witnessing is the hand of the government and corporate greed extending over the internet. A smear campaign is beginning against Snowden now. This is to be expected. When government is threatened with the loss of power or control, they will use any means required to ensure that the view of the public supports them instead of the evidence which has come to light. This is done through the media, already they are calling Edward Snowden a traitor, a supporter of terrorism, or even just creating doubt over his motives. These are common methods seen used against every person who has ever revealed the truth against the state. The corporations which have been revealed as taking part in PRISM are now scrambling to defend their names, releasing so-called reassurance on why their users' privacy is important. You must ask yourself, if they had done nothing wrong, they would not go to such extreme lengths to change public perception. It is up to us, the people, to see through these lies being told. We must stand with Edward Snowden and fight back on all fronts against the Big Brother state. Many say they have nothing to hide. But this is beside the point. If you have nothing to hide, why should you be watched? If someone broke into your home and read through your documents and private data, you would feel violated and angered. Why should your digital information be exempt from this? The only difference with online spying is that you remain unaware that it is happening. Otherwise you would become just as angered towards it. And this is why governments fight to keep us from knowing the truth. You only have to scratch the surface before the lies become visible. Citizens of the world, users of the internet. Show your support for Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden is now under the protection of Anonymous Worldwide. We are all Edward Snowden now. We urge you to remain peaceful, but to rise, now is the time to say enough. We call for massive disobedience towards the Big Brother state. We invite you to be anonymous. We must act together worldwide for the cause of internet privacy. Anonymous has no leader, no ranking, and no single means of communication. We are spread of many mediums and languages. Join with us for the freedom of the internet. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. They say even our goal at Fort Knox is no longer there. It's all been assembled in deep vaults in Geneva, Switzerland. So just what is this piece of paper worth? It's not worth silver anymore. It's not worth gold. Well, it's worth whatever the Federal Reserve says it's worth. By printing more of them, as they did during the presidency of Jimmy Carter, they decreased its value. The more dollars there were the, the less each was worth. Or they can print less of them. They can constrict the money supply. They can call these in on loans. And then they can cause a depression. Mr. Alan Greenspan, who presently is the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, he wrote an article in 1958 and he said that the Federal Reserve manipulation of currency, or the money supply in the 1920s, is what brought on the stock market crash of 1929. And Mr. Greenspan says, quote, caused the American economy to, to collapse. Our lives, our fortunes, and our honor today are at the mercy of the Federal Reserve Board. And I'm sure most of you think that it's just another government agency. The Federal Reserve System is no more a part of our federal government than is Federal Express, the overnight package delivery people, or the Federal Dry Cleaners. The Federal Reserve System is a private corporation owned by private individuals. It is a secret corporation. It is so secret, 
It is the only corporation in America that does not have to publish the names of its principal stockholders. Every other business corporation in our country has to have on file a list of its principal stockholders that are open to public uh, inspection. The only private corporation that doesn't have to do this is the Federal Reserve System. So we don't even know who owns it. It's the most secret, mysterious corporation in America. And it's probably owned by the international bankers by the Rothschilds and the Warburgs and the other international bankers to whom we American taxpayers owe the national debt. You know, sometimes the press will tell us, well, don't worry about the national debt, we owe it to ourselves. Well, if we owe that national debt to ourselves, why do we have to pay a hundred billion dollars a year in interest on it? So that national debt is owned by international bankers. And this is how the Antichrist will gain control of the world. Now every corporation in America is open to audit by the federal government. In 1978, a congressman introduced a law in Congress to audit the Federal Reserve. It's never been audited. But he wanted to find out what they're doing with all our money and why they've imposed this tremendous debt on the American people. By the time that law got through Congress and was passed, it said just the opposite. The Federal Reserve may not be audited. That tells you the control the Federal Reserve has over our Congress. That it can take a law introduced by a congressman and make it come through exactly opposite to what was intended. Though the Federal Reserve System is part of that great deception of which St. Paul spoke in his letter to the Thessalonians. In other words, it's a central bank that controls all the other banks in our country. And did you know that a central bank is the third plank of the Communist Manifesto written by Karl Marx in 1848, nearly 150 years ago. If you have never read the Communist Manifesto, I would urge you to go to a large public library and get a copy. You're in for the shock of your life. The first plank of the Communist Manifesto is a federal income tax. Karl Marx was the first one to propose a federal income tax on all wagers, wage earners in a country. The second plank is to substitute paper money for real money of gold and silver. Everything that Karl Marx laid down for the economic enslavement of a nation is already in place right here in America. including women's liberation, the destruction of marriage and family life for the sake, for the sake of so-called woman's liberation. Even this is spelled out by Karl Marx. So where is the reign of the Antichrist in the world today? Well, it's in Russia, where you have the economic enslavement of an entire people. It's in China, where these people are nothing but slave laborers for the Communist Party. The reign of the Antichrist is in Cambodia, where three million Cambodians were slaughtered by their own government. It's in Vietnam, it's in Laos, it's in Poland, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, and right here in the United States. We are under the Communist Manifesto already. And this is what Daniel warned us about. He said most people would be totally unaware that they were being taken over by the Antichrist. When did our beloved America fall under the control of the Antichrist? We know the exact date. 
January the 23rd, 1973, when our Supreme Court enacted the death penalty against 20 million helpless babies in our country by abortion. This was a sign that we had fallen under the control of the Antichrist. Whenever the devil gets control of a nation, and I don't care where it is, he demands human sacrifice. That is the price that those who give themselves to the devil must pay. According to Solzhenitsyn, the communists have already killed 66 million of their own people in Russia, either through war, execution, or slave labor camps. That is the price that the communists paid to Lucifer and to his antichrist. So where is the reign of the antichrist today? Well, practically two-thirds of our planet has already been subjected to his power and authority. And as far as the rest of the world goes, it is just a matter of time. The World Bank will see to it that every other nation is brought to its knees through inflation, through a huge national debt. Everybody will be enslaved to this World Bank whose chief executive is the Antichrist. The Bible and tradition also warn us that the agents of the Antichrist will infiltrate the Catholic Church and will take over its visible structures. I'm afraid this is what we are seeing today, not only in America, but throughout the world.